Oh, hold on. This is a little awkward. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hello. Uh, my name is Anya. And I have a lot of questions from a lot of people that are just starting to hear from you today. So, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to open with? You brought me. Okay. <laughs> well, let's just start on some of the questions because there's a lot of questions here. I see. So, we have a question here. What was your favourite song to sing and your favourite song to dance to? Well, well you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> Um, so many. I was deeply inspired and in wonderment um, with James Brown um, as a small boy, as many of you knew, but um, I spent so much time dancing to his songs and some of the greats in that time. Um, but I don't have just one. I have so many. Okay. <laughs> so we won't put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, there's just too many to choose from. Okay. Um, next question is, who did you channel through your music, consciously or unconsciously? And what, were your, what was your biggest message behind your music? Well, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it was... Um, uh, a specific being. I, I um, some people would like for me to identify that as a specific being, but it was just the wonder of whatever wanted to come through me. I always felt that my songs were perhaps um, sang in, in in some other cosmic system far away. Maybe other beings were singing and playing and dancing, and I was just a vessel. For that to come through, uh, I don't think it was one being, but maybe different songs coming in um, from other cosmic places, uh, and and I was just like, like um, like like a tube, and, and that's pouring through me all the time, and I'm at its mercy, I'm at its will, I'm at, I'm at its will. Um, and, and I liked to live that way. I never knew what was going to come through. I like that answer. <laughs> of being, singing and dancing somewhere else. That's really cool. Yeah, it was, it was uh, like being in an amusement park all the time. I love that. All the time. And what inspired you when you started creating music? Like, was it easy to create music and write songs? Oh, like I said, I was always inspired by the old greats, the Motown and James Brown and so many people, uh, so many, like I said before, many times to you, I'm a proud um, African man and I'm always inspired by my culture, and the people in it. Uh, I just, anything could inspire me, but you inspire me. My fans inspired me, and I love you. I love you so much. Uh, I still love you, and and when you dance my songs and you sing my music, um, it just lights up my soul. And I always was deeply inspired by my fans, and um, by the energy going through me, it just coursed through my blood, my veins. It was magical, just magical. So I can't say what was inspiring me, but I can list the people in Motown and James Brown and so many people. I love that. Um, if you hadn't have been a famous <laughs> singer, Michael, what do you think you would have liked to have done in your life? Oh, wow. I never thought about that <laughs> until now. Thank you. I... I never honestly thought about it until music started wearing me down, you know, in those later years before my passing. So um, at that point in time, I wish that I could just spend all my days in the children's initiative and finish up there. I wish that I could just spend all my days just with no one really knowing who I was except the children. That, that I would do a lot of this work, just show up 
um, at places and in disguise and then pull off my disguise mm -hmm. and the children would say, oh, it's Michael. And I'd say, yes, I'm here for you. And um, I wish that I had more work um, in this way with the projects that I was running and some that I was going to begin. Well, those projects sound really good. Can you tell us a little bit about them, about what you did? Well, many of you were aware of the um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Many of you were aware of that initiative, but there was another initiative that I was starting to help sick children, and that had been going on for quite some time. But I wanted to develop all my time into that project and into the children to go deeper into other countries and um uh, I think my body was just, and mind was just too worn down at a certain point, and um, the need to go back on tour for that final time was consuming my days. Uh, but I had wanted to. Also, we had started a clean water initiative, and I was getting a lot of support, unexpected, beautiful support from so many generous beings, so many generous people helping out behind the scenes with that, and was hoping to travel and um, I wasn't a big fan of travel and I uh, was finally starting to get some help with the cons considering that um, it's hard to want to do all these things and also stay home. <laughs> oh, they sound incredible, uh, all that work, amazing. Um, I have another question here. Um, what techniques did you use to get into a creative space or did stuff just flow through you as you described to us earlier. <laughs> yes, oh, it did. And I was always inspired in the moment and sometimes just drop a beat at any, at any point and start a beatboxing. And um, all the sounds you hear in my songs were uh, in those days, you didn't have instruments like you do now to duplicate those sounds. And so uh, that was all for me, and I, I still wander around the celestial realms, just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, sometimes when, when I felt bad, when, I, when people were scoffing at me and um, all, all of the pain and suffering that I experienced from the media, um, I, I would just uh, drop a beat at any given point in time, and reporters would come over, and I would try to just hide from them when I wasn't hiding from them I was distracting them with some sounds <laughs> uh, yeah some of my bodyguards I used to uh, just say just let, let me just put me on the speaker for a minute <laughs> put me on the speaker and let me go <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> have you ever experienced stage fright oh it's been a long time it's been a long time um not without my father around, not 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 without Joseph, no, uh, more, more <laughs> Joseph Fry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love my father very much. Um, we've made a lot of um, reconciliations in spirit, so that's been interesting to see him in a different form. Um, but other than that fear, I didn't really experience stage fright, no. Um, that's interesting when you see someone in a, dis a different form, is it? Yes, yes. It's magical wow. to see what he can do now that he's not carrying so much pain all the time. Wow. It's beautiful. Um, I have another question here. Um, how did race play a part in your work and what inspired the song Black and White? Uh, yeah. Yes, it did. Again, I am a proud uh, black African man. I was always proud of my skin color, despite all the rumors otherwise. Um, and I wanted to represent that for the public. I wanted to represent um, all of our pain and all of our power, all of our glory, all of our magic in our music um, as a culture. I wanted to bring that culture, that magical culture into the world and give everyone a chance to remember it so the greats could always be expressed through my dancing and through my sound. And I wanted to bring them an ecstasy experience, an escape, um, 
I wanted to bring them uh, something that they had never felt before. Um, and it's, I also wanted to have people always remember um, African culture and music and African American culture and music um, so that that would never be forgotten. And hopefully that goal has been achieved. Hopefully that's the legacy that I leave all of you. So I can't say that race didn't play a part. It absolutely did. And it's not for division, but for unification. And it, is, it was a, I, I feel really proud uh, to have had the opportunity to represent my race and my culture in this way when I was with you. And I hope with my music that I will always be with you. You will, you've left a powerful legacy. It's so brilliant. I have another question here asking, were you a prayerful person? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Every song was a prayer. <laughs> and yes. I prayed all the time for the people that I love. I prayed that if I held any judgment in my heart, that it would be released. I never wanted to judge anyone. I prayed um, to, to not be angry um, with people, uh, with the public or with um, the paparazzi that made my life an entire mess. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I prayed for so many people. I prayed for the children who suffer, um, who, who would come to my ranch. Um, you've never seen suffering until you've held a child that can't walk. You've never seen suffering until you are around a, a child who doesn't have water, or cl clean water or food. Uh, I pray for all the suffering people in, in, in all times. And I, I, it was a part of my day, not just something I would do before I go to bed at night. This was prayers are happening all the time. And I would say I was a spiritual person as well, although I don't like to call myself uh, with, with any labels. No, I'm, I wasn't psychic, but it just happened that I would have dreams, and they weren't good dreams. I would have notions of things that would occur, particularly people's deaths. Uh -huh. Thank you for that answer, Michael. Um, we have a question here from the chat. It says, you and Princess Diana had a very deep soul connection, and how has that progressed in the spirit realm? We've had a great opportunity to get to know each other more as friends. And that's been beautiful. That's been just a, a wonderment for me. Oh, she, she's gorgeous as a soul and uh, as a woman. Um, when she was alive, I wanted to show the greatest respect for her. Hopefully, always that would come through. So we've had some opportunities, but... Life in the, the afterlife isn't what you would exactly uh, think that it would be. We're not spirits floating around in heaven somewhere. It's not what um, the religions portray it to be. Um, I, I'm still performing concerts in, 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 the, in the world in between worlds is what I like to call it. I don't know what it really is. <laughs> so. Wow. Um, and she shows up at my concerts, and um, we knew each other, but we weren't deep friends in this in my lifetime, in our lifetimes. But when she passed, I felt a, a pain in my in my heart and, and my body it was visceral um, and terrible. Uh, it broke. She broke. That broke my heart when she left. I don't know how. We knew each other, um, and we still don't know because we're still carrying on our experiences. Uh, and, and that's how the afterlife goes. You, you are in a different parallel dimension of the same experiences, but perhaps with different colors and flavors of those experiences. Wow, that's uh, very interesting because there was another yeah. question here <laughs> asking about what was your like, life like now in the afterlife? Is the same. It's how my life would have been um, as a musical artist without all of the 
the suffering, you know, from the world without all of the pain. It's a, another version of my life. Wow. I love your explanation. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, another question is, did you have messages for the involvement of humanity in your music? Of course. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. In Heal the World and Earth Song, which were my favorites for this, um, there were some peaceful messages and the Earth Song in particular about um, what you start, you can undo um, if you start now. And in Heal the World, it was about keeping a frame of mind that was loving and that was forgiving, keeping a frame of mind for healing for everyone and giving everyone the equal rights um, as, as we all deserve as humans, you see. So, uh, there are so many messages in almost each of my songs. For those of you diehard fans here today, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. So, oh, but there was a message in every single song that there was something to better the world. And my idea of bettering the world is start with yourself. No one's going to do it for you. And you're running out of time, particularly for our beautiful earth. You're running out of time. No one's going to do this. No government's going to step in and help you. Um, now is the time to, to face your hearts and heal your minds, and um, clean up this beautiful earth. Thank you, Michael. That's a powerful, powerful answer. Yes, an earth song, I have to say, is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I have a tough question here. And as I say, any question that you don't want to answer, you just tell me you don't want to answer it, and we can move on to the next, okay? So uh, can you talk about the trauma of being a child star? And from your expanded perspective now, what were the lessons? Mm. Yes, it, it hurt. It hurt to be a child star, and it was always so exciting but lonely. I think the mm. biggest lesson was just uh, praying more. My brothers and, and sisters, as a celebrity family, we were a musical family, and our deepest connection as children were with each other. We didn't have anybody else that we could play with. As you know, we couldn't just go to the park. We couldn't just go to uh, amusement towns and things of that nature. Uh, so the loneliness was the hardest part. If you you read that in my book about my experiences. I would be, um, I'd have a few hours of lessons in the morning for my school, some private tutoring, and then I'd go straight to the studio. Would be recording immediately. So and I'd look out the window and see children playing and laughing and talking and being in the magic, and I missed all that. So we would just, um, you know, my father wouldn't let us goof off too much in the studio either. Um, so I, I believe the biggest lesson was just facing the loneliness and healing from the loneliness and the forgiveness that was required uh, as growing into a famous adult. Um, forgiveness is very important. Not holding anger in my heart over any of the time that was lost and not becoming bitter because I I couldn't become bitter. You see, that was the one thing that I would not let myself do or be or become. Didn't want to be a bitter person. Thank you for that, Michael. Well, I'm glad you didn't become bitter because it kept your music so good. <laughs> you have to stay. As Jesus mm -hmm. always said, you have to stay innocent like a child. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you for that answer. Um, we have one person here that just wants to say, do you feel the love uh, we have for you each time um, mm -hmm. that we listen to your music? And she just wants to let you know. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It um, just overflows. And yes, I do. And I sing my songs to you here in the afterlife uh, on a daily basis. Feel your love always, always. That's beautiful. <laughs> Um, another question is, did you ever have anyone that really loved you for you? So much fame and fortune in your life. 
my mother, bless her soul, she's perfection. No, no one comes in close. And uh, for those of you who've had such a beautiful angel, my mother, as I did, would completely understand my answer. She's perfect in my heart. She's perfect. Mm, that's really nice. Um, could you tell us who your favorite celebs were? James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Princess Diana, as you know. Um, Elizabeth Taylor, she's beautiful. And like I said, I wish that sometimes I would have had the chance to propose to her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that never happened. Uh, Diana Ross was always in my heart and I used to have the biggest crush on her <laughs> had the biggest crush on Diana Ross <laughs> so many um, lovely souls who lit the way for me and who held my hand uh, when I was uh, very lonely it was a very lonely childhood and the magic that they brought forth and inspired me to go forward and reach you um, I will always remember, and now I get to talk to them and touch them and hold their hands and uh, give hugs and all the things. I get to hug children, hug all the children that I want without some creeping camera and horrible things being said about me. And I was just a human. I was just a human that, that was deeply misunderstood. Um, but, but many people knew uh, my heart. Many people knew that I would never do anything to hurt a child and to hurt anyone. That's just not who I am, not who I was, not who I would ever be. Um, I still carry that pain, and it's one of the reasons why I'm able to talk to you today. So it's one thing. It's just um, forgiving that scenario of holding so much pain and carries with you. So don't judge people because in the afterlife, the torture you cause them will cause, cause us to take longer to move on. Um, but at the same time, that pain allows me to still remain in between worlds and sing music to you and connect to you in spirit so powerfully today. So I'm grateful for it as well. Um, but please, just if you learn anything from my experience, don't pay attention to the ridiculous, stupid rumors that the one people say, would say it and another would say it and before you know it, the whole world believes it. Don't do that to any human being, um, whether they're a celebrity or not, um, until you've talked to someone face to face, never spread a rumor about anyone and, and please allow this this message to be heard always. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got off on a tangent there, didn't I? Yeah, we have a lot of people here saying that they believed you and they wanted you to know that. Well, I just had to clear that up one more time, not that I didn't do it many times. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, another person asked, what would you have done differently looking back at your life? Or is there anything that you would have done differently? Oh. I don't really believe in that. The concept of um, going back and doing something differently because um, God knows the, the reasons why we do the things that we do and the reasons why certain things happen to us. Um, God, God only knows. And sometimes we just need to let God's business be God's business and not try to... Um, ponder over things that we don't understand or mistakes that we made and I was a perfectionist you see after every concert I had I would go through my mind this is why I couldn't sleep at night um, because I go through my mind every step oh Michael you missed that step and you didn't um, sing that note exactly right uh, and you, you're supposed to have perfect pitch. And if you hear it, why can't you sing it? And all these things I would say in my mind. And I want you to not do that. You see, I want you to not, not beat yourself up. Okay. I don't want to go back and change anything. Not a thing. That sounds good. 
I guess. <laughs> um, uh, we have another question here. Um, did you exit or transition at the time that you wanted? Not at the time that I wanted or that I didn't want. Um, and like I said, I don't believe that anything is a mistake. I believe that um, God knows what it's doing. God knows what it's doing. So, so when a person passes, it's not possible for that have to have occurred at a time frame when we want. That's out. That's outside of of us. That's outside of our control. I see. But I wouldn't have had it another way because that's the way it was meant to be. I understand. Thank you for that. Um, this is a weird question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> what do you think about certain groups who say your death was fake and you are still alive? That's ridiculous. That is one of the more stupid rumors that's out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I totally agree. But I just had to ask it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you cleared it up and people create rumors and then try to call it truth in, in, in these days. Yeah. Thank you for answering that as well. Um, could you tell us a little about the moonwalk, how you created it and how you got the idea? Yeah, I created that for the children. They, it ca captured their attention. Um, and I still would do it when I would go visit hospitals. I'd walk into a hospital room and pull off my disguise and they'd say, Michael. And then I would moonwalk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, where'd you go? And it's just this magical escapism, escaping from the pain, giving the wonderment. Um, so um, I, I was deeply inspired by a lot of dance moves. But some of these dance moves happened when I was afraid and just kind of shimmying away from my father, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and, and, and you recognize what your body's doing and you pay attention to it. That's how your body wants to move. I uh, had a deep connection to whatever magic was coming through. Um, but there was a motion in the moonwalk that, that looked smooth to you, but to me it was more like a, a popping of the leg, like a pop and then slide, and pop and slide at the same time, so both legs had to be moving this and this pop slide motion, pop slide. You see, <laughs> pop <so> slide. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for that. Um, so it's not as smooth as it looks. It looks smooth as you do it. <laughs> you make it look really smooth. No, no, no. Very easy. It used to hurt my knees, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> after um, I danced so much every single day that after a certain amount of time, it started hurting my knees later. My doctor can, can tell you about that. <laughs> um, so I have another kind of difficult question. Um Someone asks, did you purposely leave this world? Absolutely not. No, that's absurd. I would never do anything to hurt myself um, in this way. I just, again, my head was so full of criticism and I couldn't sleep. And as the years went on, as I was preparing for this is it, uh, I couldn't sleep. And um, the dosage needed to become stronger and stronger. And no one is at fault. I couldn't say that to you with more emphasis no one is at fault um i just couldn't sleep my head was full of judgment and criticism you have to get this perfect it's your last tour michael it's the last time this is it i want to get it perfect but my head oh, just wouldn't let me sleep okay i understand um would you come back to this world again somebody asks <laughs> maybe Maybe. Um, Are you having too much fun over there? <laughs> yeah. I don't, but see, it doesn't work like that. Um, you need to get a deeper understanding of the afterlife. A lot of people have these um, experiences or ideas or concepts that the afterlife is uh, going into some bright light and then you become someone else and you have so many things to work out like so many of us do or did that's not what happens um there's this magical point in time that can last for thousands of years in your time 
Mm-hmm. And and we do the same things. It's like we just pick up our life as if we didn't die. But I wanted a life without the stalking, without the threats, without the legal actions, without the judgment. And that's what I'm doing now. So there's no need for me to come back because I'm experiencing life with you. And it's not some ghostly life. I can reach out and hug you and touch you uh, and be with you. Um, and no one's being disrespectful. No one's stalking my house. No one's doing all those things in this life. I can walk down the street. I can take my children to the park. My children are with me in this time. Um, In ages where we each, our souls contract this, that we would have experience in this way, in this experience, in this way, um, as our most important times where we were happiest. But we're doing the things together that we didn't get a chance to do, like going to the park. Um, we're getting a chance to for them to have friends and um, just go to different schools that aren't private. I know one of them um, wanted to go Prince, wanted to go to a regular school, <laughs> you know, where he didn't get bullied. Um, I, I understand that. And so he's doing that in this time. And I'm getting to be a dad without having to, to tour so much. And, and I wanted to be much more present um without having to hide so much that's what we're doing but it's just as real to us here as your life as your life right now just as real it's just a parallel universe that this is what happens it's just another dimension it's not a death okay we understand that sounds pretty cool (laughs) um somebody else asks was the fame worth the misery people put you through yeah. Uh, yes, but in this time I'm doing it without having to be famous means something different here. People know you, but fame isn't a dirty word where I am now. So, I, yes, absolutely. And if I had to go through all the suffering and judgments and gossip and slander and libel, I would do it all over again if, if that's what it would take to touch your lives, if that's what it would take. Uh, but in this way, in my heaven, I could be around all of you as children and all of you with your inner children as adults. I can do this without having to go do that again. So, But if I had to, if God says this is what you need to do, then that was what I would do for you, and I, I love you. Thank you for that answer. Um, what is your opinion on humanity and what we need to work on the most right now. Humanity is beautiful. You're you're magical people. And I don't want you to walk around all scared, but I want you to stop giving your power away to institutions. I want you to stop giving your power away to governments. I want you to stop giving your power away um, to even your own thought systems. And you've got to open your minds. You're still walking around with very closed minds and I I would like to see more of humanity be mindful of mother earth and the short amount of time that you have left without any fear to live with peace with other children and animals and I would like to see you live your dreams more and stop giving up your power to money Oh, to 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 control systems. There's so many things that I could say in this short amount of time that we have, um, in this really unusual experience that I could have never possibly dreamed I'd get the chance to speak to someone in this way. And I've only spoken to a couple other beings on your planet like this. Uh, so I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak to you and for you to listen and for me to listen to you. But I have no judgment against humanity, but your time is shorter than you believe to save this planet, and I want you to take it more seriously. I want you to take your creativity and your magic more seriously. I want you to open your mind to love all beings and to take that more seriously. Thank you for that beautiful message. Um, How are you and the channel doing? You okay for some more questions? Um, I'm great. It's an unusual, it's awkward for, for both of us. We're very different individuals. 
and she's holding up as best as she can, but this is a very deep trance. We'll do, we'll do another couple of questions and... We'll see how we'll see. it goes. You just tell me if she's in any difficulty. Um, somebody has said, what was your highest frequency song? Or was there, was oh, there a lot? You put me on the <laughs> spot. Oh, man. Um, all of them. I, I had... the my, my goal as an artist was to bring about a jubilation and escape into a celebration, a magical wonderment. And my deepest goal was that every song could bring you to that level, even if you were angry in some of my more controversial songs, that that would bring you to feel your anger so that you could bring back your power. And if I had a song that was more sad, that that could heal you through, the grief would uplift you. Um, those are my goals as an artist. I hope that my goals were met and I feel confidently that they have been. Um, so I can't say that one song had the highest frequency. That was my goal in every song. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and we could feel that through your song and through your music as well and your dance. Um, a question here. One of our viewers hears your song, You Are Not Alone, a lot, um, and as a message from her guides. Mm. And she was wondering, was that song intended to be about God? Um, it was intended to be about God and about love for everyone, for everything, and for anyone who has ever felt alone to experience life outside of grief, to reach out, to be able to speak about your grief, to be able to think and connect to children and animals and nature and understand God through children, animals and nature and through music. And if you felt that no one else understood you, that you could be understood through children, animals, nature and music. That's how God operates through these ways. And if you're really paying attention, you'll never feel alone again. Ever. That's beautiful. Um, we have another viewer that said she feels that you were horribly uh, maligned by a few individuals in the press. Um, yeah. Can you shed light on why this would happen? And uh, she wants to know were they just threatened by your purity and your magical qualities? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose if one could put it that way, I, I really, it's not my business to know because you see, I never judge these people. My job was to love all people. My job was when I felt angry with them to forgive them immediately. Um, so I never let myself get caught up by that, but to always see the love in all people. And that, that was my goal. So I can't possibly understand why they would want to do that. But from this realm, I could say it looking at earth and humanity and all the constructs and how things operate some people have to feel threatened that's that's just the nature of life and i wish that it wouldn't have to be that way but you see i lived in a world a little bit that was very illusory very magical and i purposely kept myself in that illusion in that magic so that i wouldn't have to see outside of that and now you're being beckoned to learn to see outside of that in order to get back within it, <laughs> which I find ironic. <laughs> However, um, I can't even stand outside of this because it requires so much judgment to even be able to explain it to you. And I don't want to leave this state of magic to explain how polarity works because you're seeing it. You don't need anyone to explain it to you. You're seeing it. Everywhere you turn, you see so much of it and so little of this, so little of the illusion and the magic and the wonderment, so little of the, 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 the jubilation, so little of the magical celebration and children and the innocence and the naivety. You see so little anymore. So my job is still to, to help you to see in the magic. Thank you. Um, another question, um, your music connects people across generations in joy. Yeah. How can we form more loving connections to people of different generations? 
that's what music does. It's not something that you do or that I did. Uh, that's what music does. And that's the wonder of music is that when you create music that can break through all cultural paradigms, through all cultures, um, then that's happened through God coming through the, the sound, through the vibration of this magic. So it's not you that's doing it. You have to become the vessel. You have to purify your mind. You have to open your mind. Um, you have to let your body guide you. You have to let um, innocence guide you and to stay in this wonderment. Um, these are all things that God does, not you, not me. It was the music that did this and God through the music. That's beautiful. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of creative people here and they're wondering what advice oh, would you have for them? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to know other artists are here with me today. God bless you. and I love you. Um, I would give the same advice I just gave. Let, let the music take you over. Let the art take you over. Become a vessel. Wonder more. Hate less love more, fear less, um, and don't let your mind stop you. There's so many days I get up out of bed and my mind would say, Michael, you can't do this today. You can't do this one more day. And God would say, Michael, I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> and you just have to let God take over that mind. Don't let the mind keep you in bed. Don't let the mind hold you back from your work and for God's work, because it's not really your work, it's for people. It's not really your work, it's for God. Um, and when you understand that, your mind can be infused with gratitude and with love and with wonderment, with magic. Um, and this, this is the truth. And some people will call me an escape artist. Uh, some people will say I lived in a cloud. So what? Live in a cloud if that's what you have to do, um, because this world um, does not know that magic enough. Um, so, so let your body take over. Let your art take over. Let God come through you, no matter what your mind is saying. Day after day, sometimes I had a battle just to get up out of bed sometimes, um, but I did, and you can too. Thank you. Um what is the most important thing that you learned um, on, with your life here on earth? Ah, the most important thing is to love. I, I also was learning to be loved, to receive love more. I wasn't always good at that because I wanted to be the giver. I wanted to fix everything and I couldn't always do that. Um, I wanted to heal everything and for everyone to be in peace and that couldn't always happen so for me as a human i had to learn that there was only so much that i as a human could do that god had to do the rest and that that would take time and no matter how much music i created that it still would take leaving behind this legacy and perhaps hundreds of more years before people could do it and that i alone wasn't responsible for doing it that the music would do its job after my passing. So I had to learn all that. Um, I had to learn that, that, that it was worth it, that every all the pain, all the suffering, that getting up every single day, even when my head was aching, my head hurt a lot, and um, I had a lot of physical pains in my joints at some point. Um, no matter how well I would eat, I would struggle with inflammation in my body. And I had to learn that the body is just a tool then that magic's going to come through to heal it. And that God could take over every day, no matter what anyone thought or what anyone said. And I had to not let the, the pain affect me. No, that was huge for me personally. Thank you for that answer. Um, public figures have both fans and critics Yes. And what's the best practice, do you think, for dealing with these critics? Oh, don't deal with them. <laughs> pray for them. Pray for them. Don't deal with them. Um, I, I always, um, against the advice of my press, they would say things like, oh, Michael, don't do this interview. Don't do that. And I would say, bring it on. Bring it on. 
Um, and I would always say, you know, let me give them answers and don't even give me questions in advance. In my early interviews, I wouldn't even get questions. And then later on, I would say, you know what, if I'm going to do this and, and I know that you're going to criticize me, you're going to do it my way. I know that you're going to judge me anyway, but I'm going to take less interviews. This is what I should have done. <laughs> take less interviews and spend more time. I spend that time with my children is what I would have done. So when you're, when you're handling criticism, you can't take it as personally as I did. And you can't give them the spotlight like I did. You can't um, do all those things because no matter what I would have said, they were never going to believe me anyway. They were never. And that's something that I wish that I had just spent more time with my children, more time in nature, more time uh, with the children's initiative that I was creating um, and less time giving people um, the opportunity to 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 give me so much pain and for me to take it so seriously. Thank you so much. That's a really good answer. Um, we just have another couple of questions. So the next question is, uh, what is your message for us here now that will help us support children? Mm. They need access to the arts, more access in their education. They need more time, more affection, more time with parents. In today's world, um, children get very little time. Uh, parents have grown so much into being responsible, accountable humans that you've forgotten that you can be in wonderment too with your children. You've forgotten to let your children teach you. You've forgotten that um, your children are still raising you, and I'm not saying that that's bad by any means, but I'm saying that you can be a responsible parent and be in innocence and wonderment, that you can be a responsible parent and spend less time working and more time with your children. Um, you can hug them more. You can show them more love. You can give them more time with nature and animals. You can let nature and animals teach them. Um, and your job is to protect them from this, this world. And, uh, you, you can do that. Don't, don't let them grow up so fast. Spend more time with them. Don't let them grow up so fast. That's beautiful. Have you any closing message or anything you'd like to? Oh, I'm surprised you didn't have more to ask me. <laughs> um... <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I can take some uh, questions here from the chat. I totally see. Uh, yeah, I love you. I just want to say I love you while she's looking for your questions. I'm, I'm happy to connect with you always, and I hope that you're still playing my music and creating your own music. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to let the rhythm take you over and let it guide you into your own soul. Um. So we have someone here asking, have you met Whitney Houston in your lifetime? Yes. <laughs> That's your <right> now. <laughs> yes, I have. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. And um, she's in the same realm that I'm in. And I go to her concerts and I scream like a little girl. <laughs> I sit in the crowd and I say, Whitney, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I'm on the front row. I've got front row tickets. Wow. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not mosh pit tickets because I'm a little sensitive still, <laughs> but opera seats, you know? <laughs> this is how we roll. That's really cool. And myself and Whitney, she's beautiful. That's nice. We, we sang last week in concert. We did a dual concert and we sang I Will Always Love You. And Dolly oh, Parton nice. was there too, singing with us. Wow. Yeah, she's beautiful too, magical. Tell us more about your experiences uh, in your life now. Oh, we sing together. Uh, we give, we listen to a lot of the angels that work with us that are helping certain people create uh, what you would call, we would call it the New Earth Initiative. And we work with... Um, people like like Pamela, like channels, and we work with artists, particularly young musicians, young prodigy musicians, 
Um, we're working through various people with clean water um, in various places of earth that doesn't have it. So there's a lot of things we're doing. I'm getting to do all the things that I want to do. That's really cool. I have another question here asking, uh, were you a starseed? Oh, you all are. Yes, absolutely. And you're so perfectly human. If you think too much about being from the stars, uh, you'll get bored with being human. If you think too much about being human, you lose your magic. And then you can't connect to the cosmic nature of everything. So balance it out. Let music do its job. That's pretty cool. Um, another question here. Again, you can answer or not answer these uh, some of these questions. Is there anything that you'd like your loved ones to know or something you'd like to let? Uh, I'm so proud of Paris. I'm so glad you asked because I had a lot of thoughts about it. I thought I was going to talk about Wilted, and I know she's a very different musician than myself. I'm so deeply proud of her, and I'm so proud of all my children. I'm so proud of all of you and just know that now you really get the chance to do everything. Thank you for donating to the charities that I designated uh, for you to do that with. And thank you so much for everything that you're doing. I see you. I love you. Um, I'm with you all the time. You know, Prince, you're like lightning. You're like lightning. Sometimes you strike out in love. Sometimes you strike out in anger. Sometimes you're alone. But please know that your sister's always got your back. Please know that my brothers always have your back. We all have your back, always. And we love you with what you're going through right now. We love you so much, son. They're beautiful messages. Thank you for answering that. Uh, we have another person asking, have you seen uh, Lisa Marie Presley? <laughs> yes, I did. Absolutely. We were so different after our marriage. We had no idea that we have so many personality differences. And I still love her so much. And she's um, she's getting to do some art. Some, some, she's a sculptor um, and, mm -hmm. a, and an artist, a painter. She does beautiful sculptures and, and art in this world so i see her almost every day and i see elizabeth taylor <laughs> we we decided we might get married don't tell anybody <laughs> i might marry elizabeth taylor it was my dream Woo. that's so cool <laughs> <laughs> she's beautiful isn't she she is isn't she yes is there anybody else that you're meeting over there that ah oh, so many you're enjoying so many so many friends? Um, we've been going for nearly an hour now, so I'm just going to ask you if there's any closing message that you'd like to uh, tell us. Is there any advice for us at the moment that you'd need to you want to kind of get across to us? Um. I've said everything that I wanted to say today, just that I love you and I want you to be your own artist. Don't try to be Michael. Be yourself. Let the music take you over. Let, let this cosmic sound come through you. Let whatever wants to happen because you're in a new era. You're, you're, you're in a new era. And um, I noticed that you're in a lot of race wars and you still were when I was here. So work together. And always keep music alive. Always keep it alive in your soul and on your on your beautiful planet. Don't forget, nothing's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to heal this earth for you. It's up to you now. That's an important message. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Yeah. It's so cool. Thank you. And your music is very much alive. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm honored. It's my honor that you still want to talk to me and listen to my music today. Oh, everybody does. I saw you live in, in Cork in Ireland and it was just amazing as well. Oh, you did? I did indeed. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. So thank you so much again and thank you from everybody here. Thank you.
my chair turn all the way around? Was he moving or something? A little. <laughs> a little okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> he was so cool. Oh, that's fun. Beyond cool. All right. Yeah. My ears are still ringing. Sometimes my ears ring for up to an hour after trans channelings. You said this was a particularly difficult one. Oh, you have no idea. So I don't want <laughs> to hold you for too much longer. That's an hour. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. If he's seriously been walking in the chair, I'd be ultimately embarrassed because Pamela doesn't dance. I'll just tell you that right now. She does not. I don't. I don't. <laughs> you can ask my wife. No. No, no one wants to see that. No Christy. one wants to see that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can sing, but not with the dancing. Oh my goodness, this was so much fun. I feel the energy already. Don't remember what he said, but I guess you'll tell me later. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. All right, you guys, my link is at the top of the thing. Please subscribe. It helps me grow this channel and it takes a lot out of me physically um, to be able to channel. So I love when you subscribe and follow along and, you know, at least these messages that the beings want to get out there are coming out there. So. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, links at the top of the chat. I appreciate you. I love you. Bye.